For the last 13 years, I've prayed every day, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be my will. Let your plans be my plans. Let your desires for me be my desires for me. That is a powerful prayer. I truly do know that the Lord's will and the Lord's desires are the right things for me. That is the true secret to happiness is living your life for the Lord and living your life for the way the Lord wants you to live. But sometimes it can be hard when all of a sudden the Lord wrecks all your plans and makes new plans and changes the whole story. And I feel like the Lord has been bulldozing my plans a lot the last two years. This time last year, I found out that I was surprise pregnant with my second son when I was five months postpartum. That totally changed my plans, the way I, like the next year plus was gonna look in our life, the way our family was gonna look. My husband and I want four kids and whatever many kids God blesses us with, we'll be happy because we love our children. But it was a lot, it was a big surprise. I made a whole video about being open to life, the Catholic perspective on having children, me grappling with a surprise pregnancy. So I'll link that video in the description box below. Last August, we found out that we were unexpectedly pregnant and our lives completely changed. It was a lot welcoming a second child, adjusting to being a family of two under two, having two small babies. But now that we're four months in, it's starting to feel really good. Our son is sleeping better, not through the night, but better. It's gotten a lot better. There's been so many blessings. There's been so many silver lining. The Lord has been working in our lives so much. The Lord has definitely not abandoned us. That's the one thing that I have to say is when the Lord wrecks your plans, when the Lord takes your life and changes it in a way that you never anticipated, he will see you through it. He will give you the graces to get through it. He will bless that situation and you will come out of it a better, stronger, more whole person as long as you walk through it joyfully with the Lord and trust in him and lean on him through these hard seasons. I made a video about suffering when we were in the thick of my son not sleeping through the night. He's still not sleeping through the night, but it is nothing compared to what, what it was. He was really colicky. He was very fussy, very unhappy. It was really stressful on both me and my husband through a series of God just stepping in and guiding our choices and helping us make better choices for our son and talking to people, experts, doctors, advocates, child care experts, other moms. The Lord had just guided me with one next small step that I needed to take to help him through the season. And now it's like night and day. We had to switch his formula twice. We were going to the doctor all the time. He has a lot of stomach sensitivities and finally found something that really worked for him. And then on top of that, a bunch of people told me to try taking him to the chiropractor. Six different people came to me when I would tell them my concerns about him, his digestion, his fussiness, his general unhappiness, his trouble eating, all these things they, I would have like each person when I would explain what was going on say, have you thought about taking him to the chiropractor? And by the sixth person, I thought, hmm, I think God's actually trying to tell me something. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord speaks through other people. And in that season, I swear God, like it, the sixth person said it and I was like, hmm, wow, actually so many people keep telling me the same thing. Maybe God's trying to say this because I have been praying to God every night about like how distressed I was over the situation like how concerned I was and sometimes it's like God is telling you something and you're just not listening so sometimes you got to pray Lord help me have the wisdom to understand what you're trying to tell me Lord please make your messages clear to me Lord please help me hear what you're trying to tell me because the Lord can speak through other people especially when a lot of people are telling you the same thing often that's the way that's the Lord trying to take a step in your life and help you out my whole focus of the last few months has just been settling Oliver getting into a Good place with him, getting our family into a good groove. I just wanted to finish out the year in a peaceful way. We had, I didn't want to do anything big. I didn't want to make big plans. I just wanted to finish our year as strong as possible as a family in a routine. Getting Oliver to sleep through the night was pretty much my only goal. <laughs> Still is. That was it. I didn't want to do anything big. I wanted things to be peaceful. I remember even praying that with the Lord being like, Lord, I just, I really want the next few months to be peaceful because the last year, especially being pregnant, my pregnancies are really physically hard on me. I just wanted to skate through, like enjoy hopefully a little less tumultuous of a life, like a little bit less crazy, a little bit more Calm. That's all I wanted. That's all I prayed for. And lo and behold, the Lord dropped something crazy on our lap. The other thing I was praying for was for our family's finances. Because we are a single income family, we added another baby to our family. We were already kind of running things tight, especially with inflation. It was really stressful on both me and my husband 
for us to be a single income family, for me to be a stay at home mom, but we both feel convicted that this is the right thing for me to stay home with our children. I love being a stay at home mom. I love being with our children. The joy I get from being a stay at home mom is like not even comparable. I hated working really. I never really enjoyed any job I ever did. I didn't, I had aspects I enjoyed, but I never really liked working. Like if I could have not worked, I definitely wouldn't have. Now, I mean, technically I do work because I take care of two babies all day in a household and feed everybody, but I love being a mom. I love my days. I truly have so much joy in my heart. And I love the life that we're building together and the routine we're building, but we were praying about our family's finances. The Lord has been moving in crazy big ways, but in ways I never anticipated. My husband got a really great job offer, which is a huge blessing to our family financially. It's gonna help our family out a lot, but part of the job offer is that he needs to be in Korea for two months for training. Saying this on video like is making it feel more real because I haven't announced it to a wider audience other than our close friends and family. It's still very overwhelming to say, but we have decided to go together as a family for two months in Korea. I want to kind of talk about the process that we went through to get to this decision, why we're doing it, and the ways the Lord has really been affirming these choices that we're making. It's just funny to me because I feel like my husband could have gotten a promotion without us having to go to Korea for but you know sometimes when God is moving in your life it's unexpected things happen you just have to trust and I do trust this is what the Lord wants for our family and I will get as I said I'll get into how I know this is what the Lord wants for our family when we made the decision I'm not gonna lie at first I was kind of waxing and waning for the first week after we made the decision for him to take the job originally when we made the decision part of that decision was that the boys and I would go to Korea with Matt and support him in that and be together as a family that was part of the decision of us deciding we're gonna take this job we're gonna all go together as a family so Matt didn't have to go by himself to another country to another part of the world where he had no connections or anyone I felt excited about the prospect when we first decided but then the reality of everything started hitting me like I said I didn't want this year to have any crazy changes I thought having a second baby was the crazy change I definitely didn't think going to another country for two months as a family was gonna be <laughs> part of our plans we actually have had a cruise that I it got me through the darkest parts of my end of pregnancy labor and delivery and very early postpartum which can be very hard and it was very hard especially the first week postpartum with a c-section I would fantasize about this cruise that we had planned that I was so excited about for October my parents were gonna watch both our sons and we were gonna go on a cruise and have the best time ever and be just the two of us for the first time since our honeymoon which I was really looking forward to that is in the middle of our trip to Korea so that's not happening we're we pushed it back to the spring so hopefully it happens in the spring because this is now the third time we've had to reschedule this trip we originally booked the trip a week before I found out I was pregnant with Oliver I had to change the trip because we found out I was pregnant and I was gonna be giving birth like the week before we were supposed to go on the cruise so obviously we were not gonna be able to go on the cruise I moved it to October thinking it would be a fun birthday celebration it, Oliver would be six months old it would be a good time for us to get away get a breathe it would be the first time we'd be going away where I wouldn't be pregnant and we wouldn't have any kids with us which would have been so nice and exciting and I was really really looking forward to that I'm not gonna lie it was something that I held on to on my dark days but you know again the Lord has moved in my life he has made it clear that he wants us all to go to Korea and I am now excited about going to Korea I know I'm sad, but I also want to be real with how my emotions have been through this whole experience because in reality when God wrecks your plans it's not always easy it's not always what we want it's not always, not always exactly like how we dreamed it would be but it is good the Lord does affirm these things and I know I'm gonna come back from this trip and think this was like the best thing I ever did for me and my family I just know it I've had things like this happen where the Lord really like moved in my life in ways I didn't expect or plan or never would plan for myself. And I always end up 10x happier, a better changed version of myself from those experiences. So part of me is honored that the Lord has offered me another opportunity to grow and change in such a significant way. And I am excited. I just, it took me a little bit of time to adjust <laughs> to the news. Not gonna lie.
It took some time and prayer to adjust. Through time, prayer, and conversations with my husband, I finally realized I needed to stop wrestling because once we made the decision, then I started wrestling with the decision. We decided we were all going and then I looked up what the prices of the flights were and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're making more money, but we're not gonna be making that much more money that it like makes me feel comfortable about spending all this money for tickets because my husband's flight is covered and our accommodations are covered, but mine and my son's flights are not covered. And right now our thought is it's very expensive to fly to Asia. It's very expensive to fly to Korea from where we live in Texas, but I've just been praying through that. I've been trying to work through those fears. I also had a lot of fears because I have three autoimmune diseases. I went into a coma when I was five weeks postpartum with my son, Teddy, my first son. The fear of something like a medical emergency happening in another country where we can't really communicate as well is a fear of mine. So I really need to get a medical bracelet. Pray I get my medical bracelet before I go with the Korean writing to let them know that they need to give me the right medication so that God forbid like anything happen, I would be okay. Cause that's a little nerve wracking. On top of that, I have a gluten allergy and I've been like looking into doing, praise God for the internet. You know, one huge silver lining and blessing is like, if we were doing this 10, 20 years ago, I would not, even five years ago, there just wouldn't be the information that we have on the internet today. There's so much information about Korea, going to Korea, what it's like in Korea. Actually, there's so many videos where you can like YouTube this, like a city and watch someone walk through the city. So I've been doing that a lot with Teddy to get excited about where we're going and also familiarize ourselves with like, so it's not everything so foreign. I've been watching videos of people walking through the city that we're gonna be staying in just to comfort myself and get excited about what the sights and sounds and what we're gonna be seeing. There's so many beautiful blessings that have been happening and things that have been helping me get excited about this trip. Korea looks like an incredible country. Talk about a place like that I really wasn't thinking about or knew very little about before I was going on this trip and now I'm really excited. I think it's a really beautiful, cool country and I, I feel like I'm gonna fall in love and not wanna go home and Matt, I don't think Matt would like that, but I know me and I just, I love an adventure and I, it looks like such an incredible place. So I'm excited about going. I don't have a lot of time to learn the language. I'm trying to learn a few phrases, but the structure of the Korean language is so different than English words. Like even the way their consonants and vowels, the way their words sound, it's harder for me to form. I'm also not really great with language. I never have been, but I find it's harder for me to pick up phrases than like say when I went to Germany, I could pick up the phrases I feel like a little bit easier than picking up these phrases. So I'm hoping I can just pick up a few things. One, because I don't want to come off as rude. I think it can seem really rude when you go to another country and you don't have any words for the people. But also I just want to be able to feel like I can, you know, even initiate a conversation to then show them on my phone what I'm like uh, trying to do. But all of the obstacles, the first week of going there, my health issues, the language barriers, the fact that I have celiac disease and trying to communicate to restaurants, like what I can and can't eat because gluten-free products doesn't seem to be as common over there from my research. Now, when I get there, hopefully I'm pleasantly surprised. Please God, let, it, let me be pleasantly surprised. I'm really nervous about the food situation because I know their food's delicious there, but they cook a lot with soy sauce and all those other things. And I have celiac disease. I'm very sensitive. So another thing I'm very, very nervous about. So please pray for me. All of those things, like every night when I would go to bed on top of not sleeping because of my son, then I wouldn't be able to sleep because I would have racing thoughts about everything I need to do for this trip. And after a week of wrestling back and forth, having sleepless nights every night, I had a conversation with my husband and we talked about the pros and cons of me and my kids going or me and my kids staying. And then I had this revelation and I was like, at the end of my life, when I die, Will I be sad that I spent two months away from my husband just for it to be a little bit more convenient for me to be home? Because at the end of the day, it's not gonna be easy to be home with two babies without my husband either. I had this revelation like, no, absolutely not. Being away from my husband for two months is not the answer. It's not the right situation for us. I will always regret spending two months away from my husband no matter if we have a, like a hundred years together. I would be sad that I missed two months with him. So I absolutely don't wanna be away from my husband for two months. Even if the stress of like flying for 13 hours with two babies and all the other things, it's still not as bad as being away from Matt for two months. We fully decided and I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop questioning and I'm gonna 
to give this to God and I need God to open the doors for me because we had a lot of things that we had to overcome and we actually still have a lot of things we have to overcome. But one of the big things we need to overcome was getting passports for our sons. Leaving at the end of September, early October, we made the decision in mid to end July, maybe like the last week in July. I can't remember. It's all a blur. Let me tell you, it's been a blur. We needed to get passports for our kids. Getting passports can be really hard. And with children, you have to have both parents at the passport appointment to get the passport. And it takes, even with expedited, even if you pay extra for expedition, it can take up to like nine weeks and i think we had just nine weeks before our trip i was praying to god about it every passport appointment was fully booked out i called the passport hotline they were like oh yeah you can call two weeks before your trip and you can make an appointment and then you and your husband have to go down there and you spend the day there but then they give you your passport that day but my husband's starting a new job and i don't think they'd be like super crazy about him taking a whole day off even if it is to get passports for his kids to go to korea because at the end of the day they don't care if our family goes to korea they want matt to go to korea they don't care if me and the boys go to Korea. We were really nervous about that, but praise God, I checked every day for days and days because I was so anxious. And every time I checked the websites, it said four weeks out, no appointments, four weeks out, no appointments. And on top of that, then like you can't make an appointment. There's no option to make an appointment further than four weeks out. So it's basically saying like no appointments, sorry, check back later. Well, by some miracle, one day I was like feeling sick about it again, that we didn't have these passports and I didn't know what we were gonna do. And the two week option didn't sound like a great idea to me or something I wanted to try i checked the websites again and by some miracle we got an appointment on a saturday at 11 30 in the afternoon which was perfect for the boys naps we got there we were fully unprepared i had looked at the website but it's a kind of confusing to navigate the passport website i wish they would make it a little bit clearer like they say you can pay with card and part of it you can pay with card but you have to have a money order to pay for the other part of it or a check we didn't have a checkbook with it us so matt had to leave and go get a money order but the people normally like government office people have a bad reputation i have to say these people were so wonderful 10 out of 10 like the most lovely people i've ever dealt with they don't deserve the bad reputation that government workers get because they were wonderful they were little angels and they made the experience so pleasant we were in and out within an hour even and it would have been faster if we hadn't screwed up things and what's crazy is I had gotten an email, thank God I didn't read the email before we went there, that if you were missing something, they could turn you away and make you get another appointment. And then if they had turned us away, I would have had a breakdown because like we had fought so hard to get this appointment. Talk about the Lord. Again, as I said, the Lord opened doors. Like the Lord opened a door for this appointment, which should not have happened because I sent the same website to my friend to check to see if that location had options. And it's just fully gone, fully booked up. And I sent it to her that day when I had openings. Just told totally gone like no more appointments so it's crazy that we got this i mean i'm telling you the lord just moved in in such incredible ways we actually just got their passports last night praise the lord just in time for our trip that all worked out the passports and that was like my biggest biggest stressor because you know that takes the longest it was the most up in the air we had to and we needed to get to korea the lord totally opened the doors when it came to our passports and i'm so so grateful and it was just like another affirmation that the lord was with us the lord was blessing this trip the lord wanted us all to go on this trip Other thing I was mentioning that we were really really stressing about is our plane tickets because the tickets are really expensive like thousands and thousands of dollars we were already struggling <laughs> with finances I was like Lord how are we gonna pay for these tickets every time I would worry about the prices of the tickets I would just literally instead of letting myself like go down that rabbit hole of worrying I would be like Lord you want us all to go on this trip together you need to help us come up with a way to pay for these plane tickets please Lord please open the door and the Lord opened week ago opened the door for us just last week basically gave us the money for the plane tickets totally unexpectedly without anything we had to do for ourselves i'm still pretty blown away by it it was a completely unexpected situation and this was not like originally a situation that seemed like a good thing like at first we were both really upset about it matt and i were both really upset about it and then we started thinking about it and then we learned the financial blessing that it would have and i can't really get into the details for personal reasons 
reasons, but let me just tell you, the Lord came through for us again when it came to this financial blessing as far as the plane tickets are concerned. And I'm just so, so grateful. And I'm so grateful that it worked out. I feel conflicted about sharing the Lord opening doors because I think sometimes we can think, oh, well, if the doors aren't opening, then the Lord isn't blessing it. But sometimes it takes time. It takes walking in faith. It takes taking action if we feel prompted to do something and walking in faith before we see the results. Like having a YouTube channel has been something the Lord has put on my heart for years and years and years and years. And it's been a lot of work, a lot of <laughs> thankless work. <laughs> to be honest, I've had my other channel, which is now really focused on mom life, but I've had my other channel even before I was a mom, when I was single, before I even met my husband. And I had another channel long before that. I've been kind of working at this for years and years and years and years it's not like doors were flying open for me even though there's some it's something I prayed for so I, I will talk more about discerning God's will and opening doors because I don't want you to hear this and hear like God opening all these doors for this trip and think well God's not opening doors for me even though I feel called to do it so maybe I'm not called to do it because sometimes it does take walking in faith like Matt accepting this job before we knew how we were gonna pay for the plane tickets before or we knew how we were gonna handle the passports or if we get the passports on time or how we're gonna manage all that. It takes walking in faith and taking steps in faith and then putting it to the Lord to open the doors if he wants the doors open or close the doors if he wants the doors closed. Like I pray that all the time. Like, Lord, if you do not want this, like make it known to me. If you want it, make it known to me. And the Lord will make it known to you. Like in this trip, he is blessing and opening a lot of doors and making it and giving me those small affirmations that this is the right choice for our family in big and small ways, like our plane tickets and the passports in small ways, like me watching videos on YouTube to about what it looks like to be in the city to give me more comfort on getting around with the kids and getting excited about it. It's not always gonna be grand things like this, but the Lord will make a way if he wants there to be a way and he will close the door if he does not want the door to be open. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. I'd love to be your friend.